So here is uh, some more in Luke. And I don't know, I'm, I suppose more passages I've, I've gone through I could have used to show the political because there was a lot of political going on <laughs> while Jesus was alive. You know, a lot of it had to do with his, you know, it had to do with both sides of the, of the politics. The, the priest, because he was, a, you know, the high priest, but he had two roles, you know, or not two. I mean, he had more than one role. He was, you know, he's a king of heaven. He's king of, of the Jews that way and then he was Messiah and high priest you know prophet priest forever so he's going through all this of their political stuff you know because The new covenant was going to, the old covenant was getting ready to pass away because when he died and he rose again, you know, he passed away. So here is, which meant the old covenant that had to do with the annual sacrifice of the lambs and stuff like that, and where there was only a temporary a sacrifice for the sins, right? Because then they people used to, you know, they they were captive in in uh, purgatory or whatever. But then he went and set the captives free, and there was an eternal covenant, a eternal sacrifice, not just an annual one, one forever, you know. <clears throat> for forgiveness, you know, of sins and stuff. So he made that sacrifice, but not just for the Jews, though. And so there's a lot to what Jews believe, you know, believe about themselves. Some certain Jews, not every Jew. Back then and now, I guess. So, um, but here, the now... The tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him. Tax collectors, you know, they're political. And sinners were all drawing near to him. But the Pharisees and the scribes, you know, these are the lawyers and stuff, and the, the priests and people who were involved with doing like our politicians do, and lawyers, judges, saying, this, this man... In, in Congress and Senates and all that stuff. So this man receives sinners and eats with them. And see to them, you know, what what tells us what sin is? Law. So these are people that do unlawful things. In our study, what would that be? Well, there's people, well, you know, I mean, they've, they've been in and out of jail. they got records. There's, there's people, there's civil law in America. A lot, you know, we have the civil law instead of just the common law. And so there's a lot involved with that. Like, you know, if you're a private investigator, you go and investigate adultery. Well, back then, adultery had a death penalty. So, of course, there were adulterers. And John the Baptist, I want to go over through that. That's one thing that, you know, is different than today was murdered for adult because he told some like you know one of the king's mistresses or whatever he knows she's she's sleeping with more than one man or something like that yeah I can't remember well I'll go back over it but she's an adulteress anyways and some kind of strange sexual life like Donald Trump and Clinton and Everybody else involved in politics that gets caught, you know, at least you see them all. But back then, you know, it's not to say anything the way he said it was talking, you know what I mean? A man of faith and not going along with people like the the ministers on TV do. 
and uh, he says something about it, and some lady wants his head cut off, you know, and the king, even though he didn't want to, he had it cut off. But here, this man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. So what he's saying, in heaven, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. Some sinner is somebody who's broken law. Well, it's civil laws or, or a criminal law of some kind. Because otherwise it's not sin. So I tell you, there will be more joy over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Was what I got stuck. Happened to be around sinners all the freaking time. When I, I thought learning to be a private investigator, would help, but it made it worse. Because then I had my mind. Kind of like, well, I'm okay. I've kind of got this shield. I, I'm, I know how to secure myself, and, I'm just. Kind of being undercover. And I'd listen to these people, and, and boy, they're awful. I'd work, work with them. So I kind of did it to help me to work in, you know, because I kind of my, my own agent of my own household, right? Security. And um, I'd go out and undercover, see what's going on. But really, it was me, you know, but you never know. Because they, they, people don't know anything about, like, Christianity, healthy life, being as American, early, even an early American, even other early Americans didn't know that there was Americans that were had lived like really lawful and stuff. And <clears throat> or honored everything, whatever you know, about American people and stuff. And I don't know. So, basically. I mean, Christian, me, in a household, I was kind of an agent of my own security, right? Out in the world, being undercover, being undercover for God and for myself, you know, that way, for the church, in a way, but, you know, not like a, an inc inquisitioner. <clears throat> Private. So I ended up around a lot of people. No one would really be around, you know, that I wouldn't have been around had I not learned private investigations. No, I don't think. I mean, and then also, I mean, I, I ended up putting myself in a lot more danger than I should have. Or needed to, because I really didn't know. I, you know, when I first started out, I was twenty-seven, and I only knew whatever, you know, and until you know something, you just don't know something. That's the way life is: learning wisdom or pr any kind of prudence of any kind. So, kind of had to bumble through that. You know, it's like when you start out on anything, you bumble through everything until you get good at it. Or understand how to do things without bumbling through it, you know. 
So, but I made it through. And I, I just think that um, this is totally different than the way the whole system is, though, right? Isn't it? I mean, there you got radicals and, and, and people that want it to this way, you know, completely done away with anything that has that people do for their security, right? You know, they want all the criminals and everybody and doesn't they don't even want their kids to, to be put in jail, you know. Arrested or anything. No criminal records or nothing, right? In California, that's the way they are. And then you have, but you you got a lot of people from Mexico there, or from Mexican ancestry. And then that would mean a lot of people who are Catholic. Um, and don't really believe in like what we do about common law and, you know, the civil laws, a little different to them. And the the whole order of, because it isn't Mexican. (laughs) And um, they have more of a a different way. And then even the, I guess anybody in, they, they, they had with Hollywood the actors, the entertainers. I suppose that's how it came out. But I know that, you know, it was just American law established in California. Before California was established, there was judges there. My One of my uncles. Um, C.C. Elkins in Ventura County was the first judge there in 1852. So he, he was there in 1852 as the first judge, first store owner, and the first orange crop owner in Ventura County. So he's just establishing law that was American. And, and yeah, I know, I'm pretty sure it was a Methodist family event back then because his brother is my grandfather, and he was Methodist, and he was a judge, and then Congress, then Senate, and then President of the Senate in Oregon. But he was a judge in Ohio, actually. And they were Methodists. <coughs> so I don't know. What woman have ten silver coins if she was one kind of light lamp, sweep the house, sweep the and she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is a joy of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Or what woman have ten silver coins? If she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it. She has found it. She calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I found the coin which I had lost. I tell you, there is joy over the angels of God over one sinner repents. So some these people are just lost, you know, to the kingdom of heaven. Here they're like these... They broke their laws, and the cops have armed, and now they can beat them and kill them, and, you know. And they are that, though, technically, until they convert. See, God's goal was to convert them, not beat them up and kill them, I guess, as we get from here. That's not what... But it does say that Christ did not come to bring peace... And put a sword to the world. So. It calls all the Pharisees, the lawyers, and the, the priests, and the, the people that are doing the law, you know, like the Freemason kind of guys, and philosophers, and hypocrites. Condemns them. Tells people 
Okay, you got to obey them because they're in the office of Moses. And I'll show you in, when I get to that Old Testament part where, you know, Moses, the first rulers, you know, Moses was given the law and all that. And um, I did that back, many videos back. But I'll redo it because I've done so many videos. He had spent everything a great famine arose in that country and he began to be in want, so he went to join himself to one of the citizens of the country. He sent him his fields, feet swine. Swine eight. He his father, but while he was yet it is, his father saw him and had compassion, ran, raised him, kissed him, and his son said, He's having it for you, I'm no longer going to be called your son, but the servants bring quickly the ass robe put on. Come and kill it, like he said, my son is. It is alive again. It was lost found, and I began to make merry. I feel with her amazing dance, and he called on the servants and asked what his man. I said, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatty calf because he has received it safe and sound. So he refused to go in. His father came out and treated him, but he answered his father, Behold, these many years I have served you, and I have never disobeyed your command. She never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But when the son of yours came, who is devoured your living with harlots, you killed for him the fatted calf. He said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to make merry and be glad, for the sister brother was dead and alive. He was lost and is found. Oh.